No, no, let go of me. Give me back my life. No, stop. I gotta warn you folks, there's something serious going on in this country. There's a thing that's taking over everybody's minds. It's worse than the invasion of the body snatchers. And it's, it's especially bad with young people. What is it? It's the cell phone. This thing is sucking your mind right out through your eyes. I know you're going to tell me you could you could quit any time. You're not hooked on it. Yeah, I've been behind you at the red light where you sat there texting away right up until the yellow light came on, and then you zoomed through. The only one of us that could get through the light. Yeah, you're hooked, and this thing is sucking your brain right out through your eyes. Well, I'm going to save myself. I'm going to fix it. My brain's not going to get sucked out through my eyes. We're going to take care of that right here and now. And make sure this thing is tight. And away we go. Whoa! That wasn't good. Pile up the junk. Let's go for it again. We're going to get it. This thing's not going to win. It's not going to conquer us. Let me zoom in where you can see the demise of this dastardly device. You may want to think about doing something about yours before you're completely lost. Wait a minute. I need something on there to spread, spread the goodie. Where did my piece go to? I'll stop the video just long enough to find it. All right, I've got the force spreader back there again. We're going to get rid of this thing before it kills me. I don't want to lose my mind to it. I want my mind sucked out through my eyes. We're going to work it over. Yeah. Man, that thing is tough. That's 12 tons, and it still looks to be in one piece. This thing's tougher than I thought. Maybe it's drawing strength from all the rain outside. Look at that. All right, so we'll go at it from this direction. I refuse to be controlled by this device. Here we go. We're going we're gonna to wipe it out one way or the other. Ah, this is the toughest thing I've ever seen. The enemy came well prepared this time. All right. So, I need to change angles. I'll come back. It's given off a foul smell, so I must, I must have wounded it at the very least. Whoa. It's not working out very well, is it? Ah. I guess there's no saving me. This thing's stronger than I am. And this foul odor coming from it's getting worse, so I gotta throw it out the door. Alright, after suffering and defeat at the hands of the evil cell phone god. I guess I've got to show you some something good. You see that bar on the door that's holding all those wrenches? That's a magnetic bar. I got that one at Wally World. I got this one from Horror Freight. And I got that one from Horror Freight. And if you'll look at that, that's at least a two pound hammer that's hanging from that thing. That's a nice ball peen hammer. It's seen its years of use. But if you 
you're getting short on place to put tools like me, you might want to consider those magnetic racks. They work really great. And the back of your door, it's not being used for anything. So there's a great place to stick things. Okay, so I got something here that's nowhere near as tough as a cell phone. It's, uh, can you see it? Pittsburgh Carbon Steel 40 piece SAE tap and die set. I can't remember as yet even one time that this sucker has cut a good thread for me. It's just, well, it's just not wonderful to say the least. Look at that. You want to talk about a cheesy little wrench. I'll bet about halfway bit you can just bend it over. Look at this. You don't need a hydraulic press for this one. See that? That's just an old geezer bending on it. Think what a strong young guy like A-Bomb 79 could do to this thing. Total and complete junk. But thanks to the miracle of eBay, I have purchased some genuine old craftsman dies and I don't need to suffer with this mess anymore so I'm pretty sure that even as tight as I am I'm going to dump this thing in the trash can look at that that's quality Here's the bad part about being a gun owner is if you shoot them, you got to clean them. And uh, tomorrow's 22 fun Sundays, the fifth Sunday of the month. And so to be sure I've got a reliable 22 pistol, I'm cleaning both of them and taking them. I'm taking the Ruger rifle and uh, hopefully this time I won't have any kind of malfunctions caused by me or it. And, uh, one thing for sure though, I will have fun tomorrow, but today, today it's the hoppies number nine and the patches to shove through and, and the Q-tips, smelly Q-tips and the carboned up hands. So there you are. Those are the, the evil parts of being a gun owner. Okay, here's a little tip to make your life happier and, and neater and, and a little better and this this isn't shy notable because according to the the legend there's a certain number of people that can't tell shy notable from something else that starts with an s so i decided to use a different brand that and uh, the fact that's what i've got but you can see this wallet it's uh, well worn looking a little worse for the wear here and there but what we're going to do we're going to restore it to like new you'll be surprised and you don't even have to use the color that the wallet started out. This is a brown wallet and this is black polish and it doesn't really matter because once you've got it on there it all looks right anyway. And I'm just going to smear it all over here all over the middle we're going to make this thing shine like a new penny or Something like that. Alright, got to get her on both sides. As you can see, all the, the frayed and worn looking sections are just disappearing. They're going away. And this, once you do this, it will last you for months. You do have to redo it. Unfortunately, nothing is forever. But uh, then again, you have to shine your shoes over and over as well, unless you're one of those folks that uh, wears tennis shoes all the time or, or just let your shoes go. There's, there's that. All right, put the lid back on it. We've got the polish on it. Take this little brush and just buff it just like we had the shoe in our hand or something. And in just a matter of a couple of minutes here, 
we will convert a worn looking old wallet into a new looking old wallet. Look at that. Hmm? Is that shiny? Is that pretty? Huh? Didn't hardly cost anything. Only took a few seconds. And just like that, a new looking wallet. And it's made out of leather, so really these things can last for years. Got a little uh, thunder going on there. This has been probably the best week or a little better in July that I can remember in a long time. We've had it's been overcast for days and we've had thunderstorms every day and it's been in general about 15 degrees cooler than normal for July and here we are right at the end of the month. But anyway, what I what I wanted to talk about was here recently I discovered that uh, our Australian cousins aren't allowed to carry a pocket knife. Their government won't let them carry a pocket knife. And I would guess probably the British are like that too, although I don't really know. And uh, that came as quite a shock to me because I had never had as near as I can remember other than when my knife got stolen by from a, me one time. Uh, I never had a minute that I didn't have a pocket knife and I never thought of it as being some dangerous implement that I had to, you know, be removed from my responsibility so I could protect the uh, the world at large. <laughs> it's just, you know, and in, in, especially in the southern U.S., uh, a guy without a pocket knife is uh, pretty much unheard of. And uh, I was reading a, a magazine uh, at, at the uh, beauty shop today. You know, it, I wasn't in there to get prettied up. I, <laughs> I'm about as pretty as I can get. But uh, I was in there with the boss lady. And this guy named Rick Bragg, he, he writes articles for Southern Magazine. And I guess it's not plagiarism if I read just a few little words here and there out of it to tell you. But how, how a pocket knife is viewed in, this, in, uh, in my part of the country anyway. Uh, he, uh, he tells about, uh, you know, uh, well... I'll reconsider here, and I'll, I'll get right back started here a second. I got to put my glasses on. Um, all right, so he says uh, one of these days uh, the men will no longer love or need their pocket knives uh, in the way that southern men have, and this is just out of a very good arc here where he explains all about the uses of it. He says. Uh, we know the the last when this is when we know the last southern man has shuffled off into the sunset to make room for a world of helpless no accounts. <laughs> and I thought, well, they they people are getting more helpless. They're getting more sissified every day. It looks to me like. And uh, I want another part of the article here. He says a southern man, knifeless, was pitiful. Men without knives were like men who rode around without a jack or a spare tire, just generally unprepared for life. A man could not fish, hunt, or work at any respectable employment. I am a writer, which is one step up from helpless, but I've always had a pocket knife, you know? That's, the guy has a really, really good article, and he's got a book of his southern uh, life and uh, observations, and uh, I think I'm going to order the book. But uh, that, this sort of gives you a flavor of why I found it so incredibly shocking, you know, that uh, that our cousins over in Australia weren't allowed to have a pocket knife, you know. I, it's almost, well, I would string up a sucker that made a law like that here, I'm pretty sure. And uh, <laughs> anyway, that that's that little bit I wanted to talk to you about, and, and there it is. Well, Bubba and Ole and Lena and Bobby Sue and a whole bunch of them are off coon hunting. So we got to do something different today. And uh, that's kind of crooked, isn't it? And anyway, so uh, up in heaven, uh, St. Peter got a, got a memo from the boss that said that uh, heaven was getting a little bit too crowded right now. And so they needed to change in policy on who could get in. And uh, so the requirements were that you had to have had a very bad day the day you died, you know, something really bad and stressful and all that. So uh, St. Peter gets lined up at 12.01 in the morning, and, you know, first arrival comes in and 
St. Peter says, well, he says, uh, tell me about the, the day you had before you died. And this guy says, well, he says, I come home, he says, and I find out my wife's been uh, having an affair there with some guy, and he's hiding in the apartment, and he says, so I get to looking around everywhere trying to find him. My wife's following me around half naked, screaming at me, and it's, it's all real stressful. And he says, I can't find the guy. And he says, finally, he says, I look out on the balcony, and there's a guy hanging off the balcony by his fingers. He says, so I run out and stomp on his fingers until he falls. And, and that don't kill him. He hits a, a bunch of awnings on the way down, lands in some bushes. He's laying there. He said, so uh, the, the only thing I can think of is I grabbed my refrigerator, shoved it out to the balcony, shoved it over the balcony. It fell on top of him and smashed him. He says, and well, all the excitement just gave me a heart attack, and I died. And uh, so St. Peter thinks on that a minute. He says, well, okay, that's pretty stressful. You're in. And so the next guy in line comes up, and it's Donald Trump. And he says, uh, uh, Mr. Trump, he says, uh, tell me about your day before, before you died. And uh, he says, well, he says, the campaign, you know, is all stressful. And he says, I was really exercising pretty heavy out on my balcony. He says, and, uh, and he says, I guess I got a little carried away. And he says, I wound up flipping over the side of my balcony. He says, but I was lucky enough to catch hold of the one on the, the level below me. He says, and he says, I was just working out to trying to pull myself up when some crazy man came running out, cussing at me and stomping on my fingers. So he says, naturally, he says, I fell. He says, but I hit some awnings on the way down and landed in some bushes. And he says, I'm laying there in excruciating pain looking up. And he says, I see this guy push the refrigerator of all things out over the balcony. And it fell on me, killed me dead. So St. Peter, <laughs> he, he kind of grinned at the thought of the irony of that. And he said, okay, he says, you, you're in, come on in. And he said, all right, who's next? And the next guy up was Bill Clinton. And uh, Bill Clinton comes up to him and he says, all right, he says, uh, tell me about your day before, before all this happened. And Bill says, well, he says, you're not going to believe this. And he says, but I, I was just sitting there naked in this refrigerator. Okay, so this is a public service message for viewers. And uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how to make sure you always get notified of uh, new videos. Now, I, I see an interesting channel right over here. We're going to click on it. And uh, once we got it open here, I'm going to pretend I've already <laughs> seen the video. And I want to subscribe. So I come down and I click the subscribe button. Now, oh, that's great. You're subscribed, but you hadn't got the goodies yet that little gear there you see that little gear click on that little gear there's a spot there that says to notify you of new stuff you click that little booger click the save button all right now every time that this person comes up with a new video you'll get an email telling you that uh, that video is there or at least you'll get an email if, uh, well, you, if you've got a YouTube account and that means you probably got Gmail you'll get notified it doesn't automatically work for people that they don't know whose uh, email address is, but uh, that's all you got to do there. All right. Okay, so this is uh, this is a little bit to help other YouTube creators. Most of them probably know a whole lot more about it than I do, but I know, or at least I suspect, that there's some who don't. Uh, who don't know about this little bit that I'm going to show you and uh, what it is is you're probably missing messages I know I've left messages for some of the other channels and I never heard back from them so I prefer to believe that they just didn't know about the message rather than to think that uh, you know that they just ignored the message altogether so what you need to do at least once a day is to go into your channel like I've shown here and you want to come over there and click on the video manager that that when you get to the video manager it'll open up a nice window where you can uh, see your regular uh, you know the videos you've got and such but you want to come down to community right there first thing in the list is comments these are the same comments you see normally uh, anyway Got to get rid of that old guy out there. It looks better. But the part that I'm going to show you about is the messages. If you don't check these messages, people are going to think you don't want to talk to them probably. And I went uh, some months with messages accumulating in here. 
and I didn't know about it because I'd never looked at these particular spots. Some of the stuff I guess marked likely spam. I don't know why, but you go in there and you approve it, and then you get the comment or you get the uh, the message. Usually it's a message, and uh, I don't know why they'd be marked that, but. Instead of just looking at analytics, you need to come down to the community part and the messages, and this will give you an opportunity to communicate with people that are really trying to, you know, to communicate with you. Uh, I know that it it would have been nice for me if the <laughs> the messages I left people had been uh, acknowledged or or answered or some sort of a communication from the channel that uh, that I left them on. So, you know, you guys, sometimes you might want to just come along and, and take a look at that part of your channel. It'll make everything better for you, for sure.